first story. I took a DNA test revealing I'm a product of an affair, and dad didn't know. After finding out, my spineless dad took my narcissistic mother's side, who cheated in the first place, and cut ties with me. WTF? The copy of the DNA test. Out of curiosity, I took a DNA test in November 2019. It showed up that I had a half-sister and nieces. I was able to reach out to this half-sister on the same day and find my biological father as well. I was shocked, but not as surprised as I thought. I've always had questions because I don't share any traits with my dad, I look nothing like him. However, he is the man on my birth certificate. He had no idea I was not his biological daughter. I confronted my mother about my findings, and she lashed out at me, calling me a liar. My biological father knew this the whole time, but didn't find it appropriate to approach me about it, because it wasn't a 100% positive thing. Up until a couple weeks ago, my dad and mother had not spoken to me. I showed up out of the blue because I wanted to resolve the situation with them. My mom has always had a bad relationship with me. She still refuses to speak to me, but my dad refuses to give up on me. I have 28 years into my daughter, and I will not give that up. I am fortunate that he has accepted this. My mother, on the other hand. I have three half-sisters, between my mother and two other women. I have started a relationship with my half-sister, whom I initially contacted. She is kind. My youngest sister is in the midst of an identity crisis, believing she is 100% Mexican, and just a couple days ago deciding she is now of Cherokee descent. It's kind of weird how all of our mothers look very similar. Biodad clearly had a type. Relevant comments. American Spirit Guide. I think that, unfortunately, this is an all-too-common occurrence or side effect of these DNA tests. It can either rip a family apart or allow people to bring the truth to light and begin healing decades-old wounds that can sometimes answer many questions and uncertainties held by the test taker. I'm really glad you got your truth. If nothing else, it allows you to see everyone for their true selves. Your dad, for instance, is clearly a good and loving person who cares deeply about you, and that's what truly matters. Your mother has also shown her true colors maybe not as flattering for her, but you have to take it for what it is. Maybe it is better to know than not to know. Adora Hummingbird. Man, as a male human being, this would hurt me a lot. It almost makes me wonder if I should make it a policy to test any kids who are supposed to be mine. But I don't think most women would take that understandingly. It's nice that your father came to know of this later than earlier. You would have wished to find this earlier maybe, but for your dad, I think it's better. Being a young man and emotionally attached to kids, you find out that all those happy memories and news about you making her pregnant were just lies. And you've been living with a liar, and you actually have no biological kids speaking generally. It would tear me apart emotionally, OP. I find that I'm on the other side of this as well. I would be totally understanding if my so requested a paternity test. I would never mess around, but I would never want that doubt either. I can't imagine the pain that this has caused my dad. I hope that my affirming him as my father helps, and that he knows I appreciate everything he's done for me. He spent a lot of time with me as a kid, and helped craft me into who I am today. Zinkpenny. This is a crazy story, but I'm glad that you know. I suppose it's better to know than not know. In my case, my parents where are my parents. Mom passed away in 27, and dad's not really been in my life much. He's a jackarse. My grandparents told me like two weeks ago that I have a brother and sister that my dad wanted nothing to do with and disowned, and I don't know anything about them. My family won't tell me anything or doesn't know, and it's really frustrating. I also found out about a secret aunt that my dad, my aunt, and my uncle didn't know about. So I guess you find all kinds of crazy stuff via DNA testing. OP. I feel better knowing. It was one of those things I've had over my head since I was a kid. My dad's mother hated my mom because she knew I wasn't my dad's child. She wasn't a moron. I wasn't a real part of the family, and she didn't treat me like my cousins I picked up on that as a little girl. My mom's sister also knew I wasn't my dad's child, but didn't know who my dad could actually be. My mom also had a pretty shy reputation. Everyone seemed to know something about the situation, except me. Funny. I would have to use all of that later in life to help me piece together what actually happened. Crazy stuff is an understatement, haha, <laughs> Albert Thegedek. What's the reason for your sister to believe she's 100% Mexican? Sorry to know about your relationship with your mother, but good to see you have fairly good relations with your two dads, from what we interpret from this. Good luck with your family, OP. There is a lot to unpack there. She might be delusional, in the midst of an identity crisis, or both. My older half-sister was not surprised to find out about me. She was very open-minded. I could have been met with a very opposite reaction. 
The youngest one, on the other hand, was incredibly upset when she found out about me. I'm not really sure why. Her mother and dad were never married. Upon getting to know her, she is infatuated with her social media presence. I can't come up with any other reason than delusion. Or that she gets more Instagram likes because she is claiming to be Mexican and Native American. I wanted to understand, so I asked my dad if her mother was perhaps either of those. Biodad told me he wishes she'd stop this SHT. And then he had her mother text me. And she sent me an older picture of herself and my youngest sister with very pale skin leading me to believe she uses tons of self-tanner. The youngest sister's mother is of Irish descent and fair-skinned. She was open to meeting me as well. The youngest sister claims to get her heritage from Biodad, but we can see that isn't the case. It just bothers me that she is clearly using this to benefit in some way. When I first met her, she claimed to be a pretty big deal somehow. I think that perhaps the identity crisis worsened when she found out about me, because she doesn't feel special or something along those lines. Regardless, I don't really want to get to know her based on our interactions. It's fascinating how nature versus nurture comes into play. I am a bit mechanically inclined, like my dad, and I've had an interest in cars, mechanics, and taking things apart. I work in computer science. I race cars. Biodad showed interest in bonding with me based on my interests. I think she was only pretending to be interested because it could get her attention, and she sees that I am legitimately into this without effort suddenly. I'm the competition. I wish I could explain it. I was so excited when she told me she was into cars. I could have never imagined having sisters, let alone being able to possibly bond with one who is into the same things I am into. Maybe I'm a little out of touch when it comes to female relationships and the dynamic they bring. Emp 2019 Based on your post, it seems that you have always had a difficult relationship with your mother. That said, I find it rather strange that your mother is the one who is most upset about this, and as a result, is angry with you. If anything, Shouldn't it be the other way around? I understand that these sorts of situations aren't rational, but I really don't understand how she can be mad at you. What do you do wrong, OP? Right. That's what everyone around me is saying. I believe I have dealt with this situation very well. I have started going to counseling to get a professional opinion, as I believe most people around me have a bias and share the thought that my mom is honestly a terrible person. I didn't ask for this situation, and it's completely unreasonable for her to be upset with me. She is only upset because I have undone a 28-year web of lies. Apparently she had lied that I was born two months premature to get it to line up with my dad, leaving for deployment. Too bad she was screwing around on him, and he is such a nice, trusting man he had absolutely no idea. I think his initial anger at me was due to her manipulating him. It's a lot to sort through, that is for certain, Emk 2019. Well, I hope it works out for you. This is a difficult situation for you. Learning that your dad isn't your biological dad, meeting your biological dad, meeting new siblings etc. It's a lot to process and cope with, and none of any of these things is your fault. It's really unfortunate that your mom feels this way and is venting her anger at what exactly? On you. Hopefully, the situation will improve over time. OP. Thanks for reading my post. I believe I have already coped with the possibility of not having my mother around, as I have essentially grieved the loss of not having her around my entire life. My dad is my rock, so the possibility of losing him was absolutely devastating, which was initially what led me to seek counseling. After scheduling that appointment, I was able to have that conversation where he said he wouldn't give up on me, and we have had several conversations since. I decided to keep my appointments to process the situation anyway, although I see it as moving in a positive direction. I hope anyone else in a similar situation is able to take something positive from my sharing this. Anil Knox, you can't control how she feels so you have to probably figure out how to just deal with whatever she is going through. It is unfortunate she is taking it out on you, when the situation you are all in is clearly because of her. With that being said, the only reason I can think of that she would be mad at you, and I do not believe she should be, and that she is in the wrong is because you didn't go to her first, or she could try to talk you into keeping her secret. That would have been a terrible position for you to be in and very selfish of her, if that were to happen. This may not be the case, but it is hard for me to see another reason, she would hold such a grudge. OP. When I initially went to her about it, I had already talked to my dad and sister, and she was very upset that she would have to tell my dad. I gave her the option to be honest, and she kept up with a lie until I let her know what I found. She did insist on keeping it a secret, and told me to force my half-sisters, never to say anything to anyone ever. It can just be your girl's little secret, which seems bizarre and also very unreasonable. I'm not going to try to force other people that I just found out about to do something for her sake. 
she needs to own up to her mistake. My mother even went so far as to say she wished she had terminated her pregnancy. I am her only child too. I was raised with two half-brothers from my dad's two previous marriages. The oldest is in full support of me regardless of what happens in this situation, which is nice. OP when asked about her mom. I believe she is very mentally ill. She is an alcoholic and exhibits narcissistic personality traits. I don't know how my dad deals with her honestly. My dad is 70 years old. She has had a very cushion Y life so far and hasn't worked in a very long time. My mom will be 54 years old and has done absolutely nothing in her life except be miserable. I think she desperately needs help, but I don't think she will ever reach out. My aunt who I also found out isn't my full aunt, but a half believes that my mom had every intention of abandoning me or leaving me with my grandma. My aunt feels bad that she didn't step in regarding my upbringing, but I assured her it does no good to feel bad about it now. It is fascinating to see the patterns I have found here. My grandma's my aunt's and mom's mother's mom was about 20 years younger than her husband. My grandma messed around with another guy and married up with my grandpa, who provided her with a very cushiony life too. I'm just fortunate to have come out of this whole situation as self-aware and patient as I am. I am terrified of alcohol though. In my 28 years, I haven't even tried it. I can't bring myself to do it based on what I was exposed to growing up. I can confidently say that I am a break in the cycle of abuse. My mother might have resented me my whole life due to knowing that I wasn't my dad's daughter too. There are a lot of moving pieces to the situation. Update. One year later. A picture of OP on her wedding day, with a copy of the DNA test. A little backstory. If you don't feel like looking at my previous post history. I found out about my birth parents in 2019. I have finally had no contact with my narcissistic mother after finding the truth by doing a 23andMe DNA test. I found my biological father, which happened the day I got my results in 2019, because he was a family friend. I have gotten to know him along with one of my three sisters. The youngest hates me for some reason, and I believe this revelation prompted her to take a DNA test to see if I was making things up. It turns out we share 31.2% of our DNA. My dad, the man on my birth certificate, decided he would throw me away. I bought him a new phone so he could keep in touch with me, but then he went back on his word. I gave him one last chance by inviting only him to my wedding, but he refused and threatened me with a no-contact order. On the happy side of things, my brother the oldest of dad's biological sons, he has too, came to my wedding, and was so happy that I invited him. I hope this is finally the end of this ordeal, because it was a locked-up process over the past couple years. I hope anyone reading this is in a situation similar to mine. Just remember, there are people out there who love you. You may not choose your blood family, but you are able to choose who you consider family. Edit. I just want to thank you all for taking time to read my story, commenting and sending me messages. You are all wonderful people, and I truly appreciate the outpouring of love I've received. Thank you. Relevant comments. Hoggles plastic beats. Holy cow. It sounds like you still have some support old and new siblings. But I'm so sorry for how this has gone for you. Do you mind my asking? You noted you invited, only, your dad to your wedding. Is he still with your mother, OP? Yes, my dad is still with her. But I believe she is parasitically manipulating him. She believes that I must apologize for uncovering this lie. I refuse. He has somehow agreed with her that I owe her an apology. It is a stalemate. I miss my dad so much. But I am glad my mother is 100% out of my life. Hoggles plastic beats. I just can't wrap my head around the fact that he's still married to the person who lied and presumably cheated on him, but blames you. I'm sure you miss him. But how do you throw a whole kid out, but stay with the wife, OP? I can't either. But I'd rather not spend the time trying to figure out why it is the way it is. I think my mom has spun the story in such a way that he believes I am wrong. Or that I am a liar when in fact, he is living with a liar. I've done nothing besides take a DNA test to see if I would uncover if I was more susceptible to certain things like celiacs, etc and I am. More on her parents. I've never had a good relationship with my mother. I think I've spent the majority of my life mourning for a relationship with a mother figure. Mine always chose the bottle over her only daughter me. My dad always boasted being a man of integrity and essentially having a spine. But when this all unfolded, it made me realize what little integrity he has. He couldn't stand up for what was right in this situation. I see him as a small, spineless and weak man because of it. Someone I look up to fell apart in front of me. My birth mother has caused many issues for our family. She has managed to put a lot of distance between him and my two older brothers. They went years without talking because of something BG took out of context, and due to his severe anger problems,
he would take that out on my brothers, their wives, and their poor kids. It's just a cycle, and he acknowledges it. However, he lacks the will to do anything about it. I know she spends all her money on frivolous, pointless objects to fill some void in herself. Do you know the show called Hoarders? The house looks like that except there's a lot of new objects, never unboxed. God forbid you use something like a blender. No, it's new. But yes BG, it's seven years old. When are you going to use it? Then there are more blankets, towels and food rations, and the basement is reminiscent of a Red Cross disaster shelter. She's a disaster prepper and doesn't even realize it. Regardless, she keeps buying more and more, and the house has definitely become a fire hazard, and Dad is totally complacent in the matter. More on her mom. Another thing to point out is that I believe she has a tremendous amount of credit card debt that Dad is unaware of. A cousin of mine found my grandfather's checkbook and noticed there was a check made out to her for $25,000. My cousin also noted to me, while assisting our great aunt after back surgery, that there was a check for $10,000 for her. It makes sense. She doesn't work, and she's spending copious amounts of money on dumb SHT that has no purpose fake rings, hundreds of jeans, shirts, poor quality Chinese goods from Wish, etc. I used to get a daily digest of my old address, and each day there would be three four parcels arriving. She's very good at hiding these things. Dad is just completely unaware because he never sees credit card statements, as he is busy building a cabin so she can wipe up her tracks and make minimum payments on these things without him catching on. OP last commented on this post, and subject 16 months after the last update. OP on how things are now and her parents' history. They married a year after I was born. Luckily, things are still quiet. My not-dad had chosen to die on this hill. I haven't heard a single peep from the birth unit since I went no contact, with the exception of the text in response to my no contact letter, where I said I refused to have someone like her in my life, and that I might consider it if she went and got professional help. To which she texted me, K bye, and that was the last I heard in August 2020. He still feels that I need to apologize to her for what I've done, which still floors me and everyone around me. My brother not dad's actual son, whom I grew up knowing as my oldest brother says he believes I have done nothing wrong but thinks this is a self-preservation move on not dad's part. Not dad has to live with a woman who gave birth to me, and she is an incredibly miserable human being. However, I don't feel a bit sorry for him because he has put himself in this situation. I still feel very confident that I have not done anything wrong. I believe I am justified in standing my ground by refusing to apologize and not allowing any of them the satisfaction of successfully manipulating the situation. They are not worth my time, energy, or the real estate in my mind. It's been wonderful without them. Who knew that removing toxic family members would be so beneficial? I think it's awful that people tend to feel obligated to keep their family around, because we are inundated with messages from other people, telling us things like, it's your family though, and you only get one. Which prolongs the cycle. People who hang on to the notion that it's necessary to keep your family in your life regardless of what they do to a person may never be able to break the cycle. I feel fortunate to have been able to remove myself from all of this, and make it out without significant issues. I am grateful for all of my friends, or, my chosen family rather, for being there while this situation concluded. Second story. OPF'd by setting his Wi-Fi hotspot to bomb detonator as a prank, and ruined his whole life. The title says most of it. I was at a tech conference today. I like to broadcast random Wi-Fi hotspot names to mess with people, and after the recent story about Planet Fitness, I thought it would go over well as a joke. I mean, who hasn't seen FBI surveillance van as a network? Holy F. Do not do this. The cops got called. I got to spend about 45 minutes chatting with them. They asked a lot of questions. They had to make sure I wasn't a threat. I cooperated fully. I have no doubt that being a white guy at a nerdy gathering probably helped. I was told I wasn't being charged. I was, however, told to leave the venue and not come back. Flash forward two hours, and I go to log into my work email on my phone. Huh. Password failed. Ha huh, again. Okay, let's not fat finger this and lock the account. Pull out the laptop and remote into my work PC. Go to login. Your account has been disabled. Contact your system administrator. 20 minutes later, I get the text message. You are being placed on paid administrative leave effective today, 523, while the agency investigates today's events surrounding your being removed from the venue. You are not to complete any work, access agency networks, or report to the office during your leave. We will contact you when the investigation is complete. TLDR. Immature joke kills career. Film at 11. Edit. Thank you for the influx of comments and messages. Most of you are right. 
I am a effing idiot. One doesn't come to RTIFU to brag about the good SHT they've done. No matter what you say, I'm trying to keep up. You're helping me cope. Comments. Brown Bunny 1978. Quick story. My hotspot was named NSA Listening Post. So I'm doing some college graduate work on my laptop, using my phone for the Wi-Fi at the airport waiting area on a government business trip when two teenagers set up next to me. They turn on their laptop to see if there is any free Wi-Fi. I hear from Teenager 1. Look at the NSA listening post. Wonder who works for the NSA here. In the next 15 to 20 minutes, I hear them debate which passenger does or does not work for the NSA based on their appearance. They narrow down their selection to the petite Asian woman sitting across from us because she looks like the government employee type. OP. That's some high-quality profiling right there. Guy at the conference. Information Security Forum in Austin. I saw you get pulled out and was wondering what was happening. They had police and dogs searching the building. OPSHT. It sounds like I made a real mess. NSA chatbot. Resume bullet point. Liaise with the FBI and the Agency for Security and Safety Procedures, including the handling of suspected explosives. Update. Five days later. Slightly longer version. I received my termination letter and personal effects by registered mail and was provided a certified letter envelope to return company property with, which I have already sent out. The essence of the letter was, you're being terminated because of that screw-up. Here's the part of the company manual that told you not to do something like that. Give us our stuff back or get no last paycheck. So let's get the basics out of the way. I have, from the beginning, accepted that this is wholly my fault. I meant it in jest. I thought I was so obviously past the line of Poe's law that I would simply give the other guests a humorous story to tell. It's a running joke to have Wi-Fi with something like FBI surveillance van. I wanted only that. Something for the other guests to chuckle over. Be careful what you wish for, you dumb SHT. What do they say about hindsight? Half of the world knows this story now. We'll get to that in a minute. I wanted my post to serve as a warning to others. I received several notes from people who had considered doing the same or similar, with one guy even planning it for the next day, and stopped because of my post. That is enough. Yes, we've already agreed I'm a screw-up or some variation, so let's skip that this time. I'd say to take it back to the previous post, but that got locked. I mean seriously, I just pissed away a nine-year career, and the world saw it happen. Again, we'll get to that. To the one guy who wishes I'd get AIDS, you've got to put some work into it dude. Haha, I hope you get AIDS, is not enough. You have to wish, at the very least, that I pick up a heroin addiction and get AIDS in a hobo camp. Creativity. Seriously, kids these days. I'm pretty much begging. Please do not turn this into another episode of Reddit Solves Mysteries. A lot of things were said in the previous post that will allow you to infer a fair amount. Yes, it was in the public sector. Please leave it at that. I have already shamed my employer within its own circles. There is no good reason to publicly shame them by linking them to me. I have not represented them or their values with my behavior. Please don't dox me. Thank you. A lot of you expressed concern for my well-being some time after the thread was locked. I appreciate that more than you will ever know. You helped me get through when my support system, conveniently, happened to be at its lowest. And it was a true pleasure to see the orange icon every time. Now, about that, half of the world crack. There's effing up. There's really effing up. There's effing up in public. And then there's third place on the bloody front page. What in the People's Republic of Hell is going on around here? I was only expecting a dozen upvotes, five comments of, ha ha, what a moron and maybe one supportive comment that got downvoted past the threshold. Somehow I ended up on the Facebook feeds of people in New Zealand, and one of my friends from Seattle heard his co-workers talking about it. I had two former co-workers from years ago text me out of nowhere to get more details. There's something darkly humorous and possibly ironic about the fact that the biggest mistake in my adult life practically turned into a meme. I'm unemployed. Why don't I make it for you? So now it's on to processing this. Filing for unemployment, if I'm even eligible, touching up my resume and cover letters, and starting to rebuild. Don't even get me started on the insurance debacle to come. I'd say this is the last update, but if I get a positive reaction from a future employer about this story, I'll let you know. My now former employer terminated me. Comments. Like Scammerjude 1x. Crap. I just remembered that my phone is called, don't worry, not a bomb. OPC? I'm saving you from yourselves. Now if only I'd listen to my friends. The Vine Crap. I had my phone hotspot named Galaxy Note 7. Your post reminded me to switch it before my flight. Surely going to hell. Rename it to Burner Phone. Update. 
four years later. I have delayed posting a final update because I wanted to get to a point where there felt like an ending to the story. That keeps not being the case, and I've received enough messages from people asking how I'm doing or how things played out, so here it is. Thank you to everyone who reached out to me and asked how I was doing. I know some of you truly care, and some of you just wanted the details on how things ended. I'm sure you'll understand why I didn't respond. Six months after losing the job in my previous posts, I got another job. A month into my employment, I grew confrontational with a security guard and lost that job too. I was then forced to work as a line cook at a local diner through the Thanksgiving and Christmas seasons. Without the financial support of someone I served in the military, the whole story would have ended in a divorce and or self-harm. Instead, my spouse and I sold our house and moved in with our new roommate in another state. I burned this account because my former co-workers discovered or were told about my posts. I did not say my goodbyes to most of my former co-workers or my friends. I completely ghosted one co-worker who wanted to have lunch. I felt like I was going into exile. I still feel like I did. Shortly after arriving here, I finally had the breakdown that everyone saw coming, and I had to turn myself into the ER for self-harming ideations. They sent me to a mental health care facility, where I stayed for the next month. Then I went into a year of dialectical behavioral therapy with the local veterans affairs. What followed was a short period of working in a grocery store, some vocational rehabilitation from the VA, and then a short term as a contractor for a local hospital. While I was working that job, my current job fell into my lap. It was an opportunity to take on more responsibility than I ever had, but also a chance to redeem myself. I took it without hesitation. It has not been easy, and I struggle with my responsibilities. This month will mark my one-year anniversary with my current employers. During this period, there have been a lot of medication changes. There has been a six-month period where I didn't sleep properly or at all, and I almost lost my marriage again due to my behavior. I went back to a mental health care facility for a week. I'm currently dealing with physical health issues that take time to clear up and slow my mental health progress. Emotionally, I never fully recovered. I have panic attacks, insomnia, and self-harming ideations, and I need medication and constant therapy to keep moving forward. I call the Veterans Crisis Line regularly. Many people have wondered how I could do the things I did and how my life ended up like this. The truth is that I had untreated complex PTSD, untreated ADHD, and undiagnosed borderline personality disorder. I was on a strong dose of an antipsychotic medication for insomnia. I was literally a ticking time bomb, and I had been for years, if not decades. Once I lost the first job, the pin was out of the grenade, and I spiraled. When I lost the second job, I spiraled even faster. It was only the impending sale of the house and the move that kept me together at all, and barely at that. We all have problems, some of us more so than others. If someone in your life expresses concern about your behavior or your worldview, take that as an indicator that maybe something needs to be looked at. It's possible that there is something wrong that needs to be addressed. I didn't listen when people told me I was too angry. I didn't listen when people said they were afraid of me. How could they be? I still saw myself as the scrawny kid who got the SHT kicked out of him in school. I was afraid of the world. How could they be afraid of me? I don't have a happy ending for you, as my life is still a struggle to keep my issues from being everyone else's problem. I am less prone to outbursts, and I reel myself in quicker. But I'm not where I feel you need to be in order to be called a functioning adult in society. This isn't the end for me. I am still fighting to survive but I am my own worst enemy, and it will take years to get to a place where I feel like this saga is over and I've truly recovered. TLDR. I lost another job, moved to another state, and am still rebuilding my life. Mental health issues stink. Get diagnosed and get help. Comments. No pajamas outside. So you were the bomb all along. Glad to hear you got diffused. I heart tattertots. Hey buddy, I separated from the military in 2008 and have been hiding my feelings and thoughts and rationalizing my behavior as just the crazy guy everyone knows until it really started to affect my family. I got help, and I am on the road to recovery. It took me 14 years to realize something was wrong, and when I was diagnosed with PTSD and TBI, I was absolutely relieved that what I felt had a name. Keep up the good work, take it slow, and get small daily wins. They really add up. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.